Hi everyone, I'm Nathan, and you can find me on Magic Online and Twitter as a great Nate. I have a new modern guide video for you, and today we're going to be covering Scape Shift. Like my other modern guide videos, this video is for everyone in the Magic community, but I'm primarily focusing on players new to the modern format and players who might not know what Scape Shift already is. So I'm not going to be covering all of the card interactions in detail, but I'm I'm going to be doing more of a general overview. So that being said, let's get started and ask the question, what is Scape Shift? <clears throat> okay, so Scape Shift is a control slash combo deck. And I put the control first because at its heart, Scape Shift is a control deck. And it wins with a combo um, card interaction. And that combo interaction is here. That's Valak at the Molten Pinnacle and the card Scape Shift. If we look at Valak at the Mol Molten Pinnacle, it says that if you control at least five other mountains, you may have Valakit, the Molten Pinnacle, deal three damage to target creature or player. So whenever a mountain comes into play, uh, that when that mountain comes into play, it causes Valakit, the Molten Pinnacle, to put a trigger on the stack that is three damage. Uh, it's controller's choice to either a creature or a player. Now if we look at Scape Shift, Scape Shift allows you to sacrifice any number of lands search your library for that many lands card that many land cards and put them in play. So if they don't already have Valakits in play, they can sacrifice eight lands, get eight more, including two Valakits, or one Valakit, depending on what their decision is. And when all those mountains come into play, then you get a bunch of Valakit triggers on the stack that are all doing three damage. I know that might sound a little confusing or it might make sense if you could see it, so I'm gonna show you. So let's say this is the board state, or the, the suite of lands that a scapeshift player has in play. And their intention is to combo off. A lot of times what you'll see players, scapeshift players do is float a bunch of mana. Now, I don't play scapeshift, so I can't say that this is what they do every time, but I have seen it done, and I think the, the intention is they're floating up all of their mana, that way they have the mana to play scapeshift, and cast any counter spells if they need to or if there's any other type of shenanigans that their opponent is playing they have all of that mana floated to play any of their counter spells or any of the other card interactions they may have so they'll tap all of their lands um, in this case it's eight let me back up for half a second they have eight lands in play uh, scape shift costs two green so they have that and they have blue if they need to make counter magic stuff like that so they tap all their lands and put all that mana up into the mana pool well then they cast this guy Scape Shift. Now, Scape Shift, as we said before, says sacrifice any number of lands, search your library for that many number of lands, and then put them into the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. So they're going to sacrifice eight lands. They're going to go away. They're going to dig into their library, and then what they're going to do is they're going to find Valakit. Now, depending upon the number of mountains they have and exactly, you know, maybe a number of factors I'm not fully aware of, they're either going to get one or two Valakit the Molten Pinnacle. So if they get one Valakit in the mo of the Molten Pinnacle, when everything comes into play, uh, everything triggers all at once. So Valakit comes in, the six mountains come in. Uh, I'm sorry, Valakit comes in, the seven mountains come in. That's seven triggers off of Valakit. So that's going to be 21 damage. If they get two Valakit, uh, the Molten Pinnacle, the same resolution happens meaning everything resolves at the same time but now they get two triggers for every mountain so it can be a lot um let's say that they get this configuration they get two valakits two basic mountains two steam vents two stopping grounds well when all of that enters all of those triggers go on the stack so each mountain is going to trigger for three damage each and it's going to total up to 36 damage which is a lot definitely enough to kill somebody so that's what Scapetist is trying to do. That's the combo piece. That's how it works. Uh, but let's look at some of the cards that they use to do that. So the key cards that Scapeshift uses really fall into two halves, and that's kind of the two different halves of the deck, the combo side and the control side. These are the key uh, combo cards. Obviously, we have the two combo pieces, Scapeshift and Valakut the Molten Pinnacle, but Scapeshift also uses cards to uh, ramp meaning 
cards that allow them to go get another land. One good one for them is Sakura Tribelter because once they've played it, um, if they wanted to attack with it, they could. Uh, but typically you'll see them use it to play. They'll play it. Uh, they can block an attacker. But then in, uh, before damage is applied to the creature, before the damage step, uh, they can sack the Tribe Elder to go fetch a land. They also run Search for Tomorrow to find, uh, to find any, any land they want. And Search for Tomorrow later on in the game with a particular um, the enchantment kind of almost acts like a pseudo burn spell and I'll explain what they what I mean by that so these are kind of their key combo cards now obviously they have their key control cards as well uh, we have serum visions which that's kind of both it helps them either find their control pieces or their combo pieces uh, snapcaster mage allows them to get value off many of their different spells if they needed to snapcaster mage a serum visions to dig or a search for tomorrow to find more lands they can do that uh, they play Remand, and they also play Cryptic Commands. And so this is kind of what Scape Shift really is comprised of. The ramp and combo pieces and the control pieces that slow the game down, drive the game later, and also protect their combo. Um, but there's some other cards that you will want to keep in mind. And this is not all of them, but this is just some that we didn't highlight and I wanted to make sure that I mentioned. Uh, they also have Is It Charm. Is It Charm um, is good in, in that deck because it allows them to to just do have lots of different utility. It's Is It Charm. It has its three different modes, and Scape Shift is typically able to use them, uh, any of them, to effect uh, to good effect. Um, you may also see Scape Shift from Anger of the Gods, either in the sideboard or the main. Um, in the card that I mentioned earlier that helps Scape Shift. Uh, or rather helps their, their land tutor spells almost act like uh, burn spells as Prismatic Omen. Prismatic Omen means that all lands they control are, are every basic land type, uh, in addition to the type they already are. Um, and that's really good for Scapeshift because it means that they can tap for blue for all of their uh, control magic. Uh, but then even if they don't have a, all the mountains in play, uh, for Scape, for Valakut, the Molten, Molten Pinnacle to become live. Um, with Prismatic Omens, all of their lands are mountains. So every time they fetch for a land and it comes into the battlefield, it can deal three damage to a creature or an opponent. And Prismatic Omen can actually be kind of a second win condition for Scape Shift if they aren't able to combo off. You may also see Scape Shift players bring in large creatures like Inferno Titan. Uh, maybe even Primeval Titan. So these are some other cards to keep in mind. So some cards you might see out of the sideboard from Scape Shift, Obstinate Bailoff, Ancient Grudge, Swan Song, Anger of the Gods, Relic. Just a little, little bit about these really quickly. Obstinate Bailoff is good for them because it makes the game go later. They're primarily going to bring it again, bring it in against the aggressive decks where a blocker is needed, but also where they need to gain life uh, to ensure that they live. Ancient Grudge is in there for probably mainly Affinity, but also any other... Uh, you know, ancillary artifact decks they may encounter. Swan Song is good against other um, other control decks because it's a very efficient counter spell that can protect their combo piece. Anger of the Gods is another one that they're going to bring in in aggressive matchups. Uh, they may even bring it in against Pod because it's good against their persist creatures. Relic of Progenitus, if you're playing a deck that has graveyard interaction, you want to know that Scape Shift has access to that, and it's something that a lot of lists bring in. And then we have these uh, additional spells as well. We mentioned the Titans before. Uh, Vendillion Click is good against combo and control. Spellskite's good in aggressive matchups. It's just an efficient blocker. Uh, but if they're, depending on what plan they are, its ability can also be relevant. And then, um, you know, Spellskite also, I guess they'd bring it in against Burn. Um, and then Engineered Explosives is kind of a kind of a catch-all board wipe. Um, so, so that's the cards that they're typically going to bring in in the sideboard. You're going to know if you're facing Affinity if you see any of these cards. Uh, if you just see a Serum Visions, eh, you may be facing Scape Shift. You may not be facing Scape Shift. But if you see Sakura Tribe Elder or you see Search for Tomorrow, it's almost definitive. There is a chance you could be placing or facing the uh, Goblin Charbelcher deck, but more than likely it's going to be Scape Shift. And if you see a Valakit, then you're definitely playing Scape Shift. Uh, because nobody else plays that card. So I think that's pretty much it for the quick, the quick scape shift guide. Um, I hope it gave you guys a little bit better of an understanding. And again, 
It's just meant to be a surface level overview. It's meant to inform those who don't already know what Scapeshift is uh, a little bit more about what what's the word Scapeshift means and what it's referring to. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and I hope to get to some new videos to you soon. Thank you very much.